Hey guys, this is Dad and some DIY, and today we're going to be showing you how we ripped out the carpet in our basement and installed the wooden flooring on the concrete. The end result turned out pretty good and we learned a lot of tips along the way which we can share to you guys. With that said, let's get into the video. What you're seeing right now is our basement before the project. The kitchen area had a floating engineered hardwood and the rest of it had carpet. The first step was to remove the old flooring to get prepared for the new hardwood. We started by removing the quarter round molding and the pre-existing wood, a process that we went into much more detail in our previous video where we show how we were able to reinstall the flooring. We didn't remove the baseboard as we are planning on installing quarter round molding later. After that we cut the carpet and padding with a utility knife and ripped those out. We also had to remove the tack strips using a pry bar and a rubber mallet. While removing the flooring, it's not necessary to completely empty the room. We were moving around our furniture while doing this because we didn't have anywhere to put it. However, if you also end up doing this, we recommend covering your furniture with moving blankets or wrapping it up with plastic to keep it from getting damaged. Once all our old flooring was out, we noticed that part of our concrete floor wasn't flat. The floor needs to be flat within 3 16ths of an inch in the 10 foot radius, which ours wasn't. To fix this, we used an angle grinder with a diamond concrete disc to grind away the high spots. This will have created a lot of dust, but we rigged up a way to connect our shop vac to the grinder, which picked up most of it. The biggest problem area was around this circle, which seems to have been a separate concrete pour by the builder. Afterwards, we used the oscillating multi-tool to cut the door jams to the proper height, using some scrap flooring to judge how much to cut. Then we vacuumed the floor, making sure no debris or nails were still on the ground. Then we rolled out the underlayment for the flooring, which acts like a vapor barrier between the concrete and the wood and also helps with noise reduction. The specific one that we're using is made up of some sort of recycled felt material, so it was a little difficult to cut but didn't move around once laid down. Now before we get started with laying down the flooring, we let the wood sit in our basement for about a week to let the wood acclimate to the temperature and moisture of the area. This is important because it allows the wood to get used to its new environment which prevents excess expansion and contraction once installed. The wood that we're going to be installing is a half inch thick engineered wood flooring. That means we have a layer of premium quality wood glued on top of plywood which is especially nice when installing on a concrete slab because it's less likely to cup due to moisture than solid wood is. We recommend having a few open boxes of wood flooring to grab from when installing the wood because there can be variations of color and grain pattern between different boxes. Mixing the wood ensures that's varied and spread out throughout the floor area. We installed the wood parallel to the long wall in our room, so for the first row we had to notch out the wood for the door. We made marks with a pencil, then cut the notch using the table saw and the jigsaw. After that we ripped out the rest of the boards for that row down to the matching width. Then we laid down the boards with the groove facing towards us and glued them together using a rubber mallet and pry bar to make sure the seams were tight. Now 
When installing the flooring, it's super important to leave a half inch gap between the flooring and wall for wood movement. We use some scrap flooring as spacer blocks. The first few rows are the most difficult to install because the flooring can move around a bit while the glue is still wet. However, it's extremely important to make sure the first few rows are straight because any mistakes now will result in large gaps later on. Basically, the mistakes will end up compounding. To help prevent this, we recommend laying down a few straight lines using a chalk string for reference. The walls of your home aren't guaranteed to be straight, so keep this in mind while laying down the floor. When connecting the boards, we filled the grooves about halfway full with glue and used the mouth to gently tap the boards together. We also used some masking tape to help hold the boards together while the glue dried. A quick tip is to use an offcut from the flooring as a tapping block, which can help prevent damaging the edges of the wood. We end up using this later on in the project. When you get to the end of the row, you'll need to cut a board to length. Don't worry though, the offcut can be used for the starting piece on the next row, so it won't be wasted. Instead of taking measurements, a quick way to mark the board to length is to simply flip the board over so the tongue is facing you and mark it to fit. This way helps prevent any errors due to measuring and streamlines the process. After measuring, we cut the piece with the miter saw, then glued it into place, making sure to keep the half inch gap. Another tip is to roughly lay out a couple rows of boards before installing, which helps speeds up the installation process and helps prevent mistakes. You want to make sure that the boards overlap each other so that each new row helps support the previous one. When we got close to the end of the underlayment, we rolled out another strip. This particular underlayment had a built-in adhesive strip which we used for joining the underlayment together. Then we kept on building out the wood flooring like before. The project spanned over a few days, and a couple of times we found some excess glue in the grooves that dried overnight. The glue was easy enough to remove with a knife or a screwdriver, but it's another thing that could have introduced gaps if gone unnoticed. By the bathroom, we had to transition the wood to the vinyl, so we ripped down a board to 3 inches wide on the table saw, and then installed it perpendicular to the rest of the flooring.
We had a couple of these weird things sticking out, which we don't really know what they're called, but we notched out the flooring to accommodate them using the jigsaw. When we got to the kitchen, we had to notch out the flooring with the jigsaw for the cabinets, but other than that we kept installing like normal. After that we moved on to installing the quarter round molding to finish off the project. The quarter round molding that we're installing is actually made out of 2x4s and we're going to have a separate video showing how we made it coming out soon. To install the molding, we used 2 inch nails with the 18 gauge nailer and shot nails in about every 16 to 18 inches into the trim. We made all of our cuts for corners and joints using the miter saw. There were a couple places where the nail didn't go fully under the surface of the wood, so we used a nail punch and a hammer to gently tap the head of the wood underneath. We also made sure to fill all the holes with wood putty. After that, the basement flooring was complete. As you can see, this is how it turned out. We think it looks pretty great. The flooring feels really solid and there weren't any major gaps. The project was a little repetitive and time consuming, but overall wasn't too difficult. If you enjoyed the video, we would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button and subscribe. We have an upcoming video showing how we made our custom quarter round molding from 2x4s and another one showing how we installed this wood flooring on stairs with DIY modern square bullnoses. With that all said, we hope to see you in our next video.